In this video, we're going to make a key door system. We're going to create keys of various colors and make sure a specific key only opens a specific door. The player will carry the keys and open the doors. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here we're going to make a very nice key door system. One example of this system in use is in the FPS game I made recently. If you haven't played it yet, go check out the link in the description. It's fully playable in your browser and nice and short. The game contains several colored keys and several colored doors. So just like we have right here. So over here I have my three nice doors. So the blue door, red door and the green door and the corresponding three nice keys. And if I try to go through a door, yep, there you go. As you can see, I cannot open it. So I can go into the key and as soon as I collide with it, there you go, I've picked up the key and you can see that the UI updated. So the key is currently in my key holder. And now if I try to go to the green door, there you go, I cannot open because I have the red key. But if I go into the red door, there you go, the key is consumed, the door opens and I can go through. And over here I have my nice trophy and there you go, I've won this mini game. All right, great. Also, this really cool outline shader was made in Shader Graph in another video, so go check that out to see how it works. And then all of the other keys were the same. So the green key, there you go, open the green door, and the blue key, and there you go, opening up the nice blue door. So here we have our system. Also, in this video, we're going to create a custom key holder in order to hold our keys. But you could very easily adapt this code to work with the inventory system we created previously. So that way, you don't have a container just for the keys, but rather store them in the inventory like any other object. So again, here it is, pick up the key, open the door, go through the door, and win the level. All right, so this is our goal, let's get to it. Okay, here I am in our starting scene. All I have is a player character that I can move around. Now let's begin by making the key object. So here is the scene, and on the hierarchy, let's right click to create an empty game object. Let's call this the key red. Let's add a sprite renderer, drag the key texture, and let's send it in red. All right, there's the key. Now let's add a circle collider, and we make it a trigger. All right, so here we have our red key set up to handle collisions. And now over here, we have the player game object. And as you can see, he has a rigid body 2D and also a box collider 2D. So this is what we need in order to handle collisions on both sides. We need two colliders and at least one rigid body. So let's make our key script. So we make an EC Sharp script, call this our key, and drag it into our key game object. So just like that, okay? Now in here, let's first define the various key types using an enum. So we make a public enum, call this our key type. And this will be our various keys. So let's say red, green, and blue, okay? And now we want to set the key type for each key. So let's simply add a serialized field for our key type, key type. And now we can go into the editor. And yep, there's our key script and we have a nice drop down menu in order to choose our key. So this one is the red. Okay, so far so good. Now that we have our keys, let's create a script to hold them. So let's make a new script and we're going to call this one the key holder. And this one will go on the player. So go on the player and drag the script, okay? So here we want to hold a bunch of keys. So the way we're going to do that, let's make a list, a list of type key.keyType, and this will be our key list. Okay, so we have a list of keys and we instantiate it on awake. Now let's make some functions to work with this list. All right, so here we have some functions. We can add a key, we can remove a key, and test if this key list contains a certain key. Now the way we're going to interact with our keys is with a trigger. So on our key holder, let's add a private void on trigger enter 2D. Again, here on the key red, we made a circle collider and we checked is trigger. So that's why we're using on trigger enter. So this gets fired whenever the collider enters another collider. And now when we do, let's try to see if we collide it with a key. So we test if the collider.getComponent of type key, if it is not null. So if the key component is not null, then we have collided with a key. 
And now we want to add it into our list. So we do add key and we're going to pass in the key type. So we need to go into the key and make a function to expose it. We're going to call it get key type. So let's make this inside of our key. Okay, so in here we just make this. Okay, there it is, very simple. And now here we add the key from that key. And after doing it, we want to destroy the key, so we just call destroy the key dot game object. All right, there it is, very simple. So on trigger enter, we check if we collided with something that contains a key component. And if so, then we add the key onto our key holder and we destroy the key game object. Now let's just add a debug.log in here. So you should be able to see our log saying that we've added our key. Let's test. Okay, here I am and you can see the key down there. And as I move towards it, yep, there you go. The key was destroyed. And over here on the console, yep, added key rep. All right, awesome. So now that we can capture keys, let's handle using them. So first let's construct the simplest door possible. So make an empty game object, call this our door. Now inside, let's add the door sprites. Okay, so here the texture I'm using is just of one side. So we have a sprite for the left side and a sprite for the right side. Now that we have the visuals, let's add the colliders. So we want to have one collider to stop the player, so working as a wall, and another one to test when the player is near. So first on the door game object itself, let's add a box collider. And for this one, let's make it a trigger. So being trigger means that it will not stop anything related to physics. So we're going to use this one to identify when the player is near the door. So let's make it quite a bit bigger. Okay, so just like that, we're going to identify when the player enters this area. And now inside, let's make another game object. This one we call our collider. And in this one, we also add a box collider, except this one is not a trigger. So this is the one that will stop the movement of the player. And let's make it match the door size, just like that. Okay, so over here, we have our door split on the left and right, and we have our main game object. Now let's just rename this to the door red, since later we're going to deal with different colors. And inside, let's just tint this in red just to see. Okay, so we have our door set up. And over here on the side, as you can see, there's also a bunch of walls which all they have is a sprite renderer and a box collider. So if we test this out, okay, so here I am and I can go inside the trigger area, no problem, okay, great. But I cannot go through the wall and I cannot go through the door. All right, so far so good. Now let's make our door script. So a new script, this one we're going to call our key door, drag it into our door, okay. And now here we're going to do similar to what we did to grab the key. So on the key holder, we can use the same on trigger enter and we're going to test if we collide with something with the key door. But before we do that, let's first add the key that relates to this door. So let's simply add a serialized field for our key type. Okay, we just have a field for our key type and a function to return it. And now here in the editor, we see our door with our key type and yep, this one is red, okay, good. So now we can go into our key holder and in here we're doing on trigger, trying to capture the key, okay. If it is not the key, then we try to capture the key door script. So if we did collide with something, test if it has a key door, and if it does, then here we want to test if the key holder currently contains the key that is used to open that door. So you go into the key door in order to get the key that is used to open it. Okay, so we have the key type, and we can use this function to test if we contain that key. So if we contain this key, then we are currently holding the key that we need to open this door. So we're going to make a function on our door called open door. So let's make that over here on the key door. Very simple, just void call it open door. And here just for testing, let's do the simplest thing. So we just set the game object to active as false. So we're going to hide the door when you open it, okay. And on the key holder, after we open the door, let's also consume it. So we remove the key of this key type. This is obviously optional. It depends on your design, whether you want to consume keys or not. But in this case, let's do it like this. All right, so just like this, we have pretty much the entire thing working. So on the key holder, which is placed on our player, we have our trigger enter. And if we collide with the key, we grab the key. And if we collide with the door, we test if the door is opened with a key that we contain. 
And if so, then we remove the key and we open the door. Let's see that. Okay, here we are, the door is closed. And if I go inside the trigger, yep, nothing happened since I do not have the key. But if I go down here, Yep, there you go, I've picked up the key and now I move towards it and as soon as I enter the trigger area, there you go, the key opens the door and now here's my nice star and I've captured it and I've won this mini game. Right, awesome. So here our system is pretty much fully working. We have a door that only opens if we have the key. And here just for fun, I have this nice outline effect and if you want to see how that was made, then check the link in the description. It was fully created in Shadograph. So now with this working, let's add a new type of key and a new door. Okay, so I have added a green key and a green door. They work exactly the same. The only difference is over here on the enum field. So you can see this key door contains a key type of green. And again, on the key green, we have a key type of green. All right, so just like this, let's try it out. Okay, so here I am and I cannot open the red door. Neither can I open the green door. Okay, I can't open any of them since I don't have any keys. Now let's pick up the green key. Okay, I've picked it up. Now let's try to open the red door. And nope, I cannot open it, but if I go into the green, yep, there you go, I can open the green door. And if I pick up the red key, and yep, now I can open the red door and win our minigame. Alright, awesome. So just like this, we can easily support multiple key and door types. Now let's try replacing these doors with something more animated. Okay, so I've replaced the basic doors with some nicer ones, with some nice animations, as well as a key. So if I try to open, there you go, we have a nice animation saying we cannot open the door. And same thing on this one, so I cannot open any of them. Now let's pick up the green key, and I'll try to open the red door, and yep, I still can't open it. Now I'll try to open the green door, and there you go, it opens perfectly and I can go through. So same thing, pick up the red door, and yep, go through, and awesome, and I won again. All right, great. So just like this, it's looking really nice. Okay, so back in the editor, we can see how it works. Here we have the door and the key prefabs. And here in the door, you can see that it has an animator, then the same box collider as previously, working as a trigger. Then we have our key door with our red key, and we have a simple script to handle the animator. Inside, it still has the same thing, so it's split on the left and on the right, with an extra one just for the animations. And then for the key, again, the same thing, just a simple animator, playing an animation, so we have our sprite and our shadow. And again, here it is, looking great, so pick it up, open it, and go through, and yep, awesome. All right, so now one final thing, let's add a UI element. So here in the editor, let's make our UI object. So go inside the canvas and let's make an empty game object. We're going to call this the UI key holder. Now inside, let's make a container game object. This is where we're going to place our key images. So let's make a template for a key image. Okay, so here it is, very simple, we just have an image. Now let's make our script to handle this. So we make a new script, We're going to call it the same thing, so UI key holder, and we drag it onto our game object, okay. Now here, the first thing we need is grab the reference to the container and the template. Okay, we grab our references and we hide the template. Now in order to set up our visuals, we also need to have a reference to the key holder that we want to represent. So let's make a serialized field in order to add it. Okay, there it is, now we can go into the editor. And here we can simply drag the key holder that is placed on the player, okay, there it is. Now here we need a function to update the visual. So in order to update it, we need to go into the key holder in order to figure out which keys is currently holding. So let's go into the key holder and we need to make a function to expose our key list. Okay, we have this function and now we can cycle through it. Now we instantiate our template. Now we position it correctly. Now we need to set the correct color based on the key type.
All right, so that's about it. Here on our UI key holder, we have a reference to the key holder, and then we have a function that is going to update the visual. So we just cycle through all the keys that we are currently holding. We duplicate our template and we set the correct key color. So let's test this. And here we are, and let's pick up the red key. And yep, I picked it up, but nope, nothing happened. The reason for that is because we're not calling our update function anywhere. So here the function works, but it's not being called at all. So let's use an event inside of our key holder to fire when something changed. So here in our key holder. So we have an event called on keys changed and whenever something changes, let's invoke this event. All right, that's it. We just fire it when we add a key and when we remove a key. So now we can go back into the UI and let's make a private void start. And on start, let's go into the key holder in order to subscribe to the on keys changed event. And now here we can update our visual. And one final thing on the update, we are instantiating, but we are not cleaning it up. So let's do that quickly. Okay, so on the update visual, we clean up the old key. So we just cycle through the container and we destroy every key in there that is not the template. And then we instantiate based on the current key holder key list. So just like this, everything should be working. Let's see. Okay, so here we are and there's nothing on the UI and I cannot open this door nor this door. Okay, now let's go and grab the red key. So as I pick it up, yep, there you go. The UI now shows that I have the red key. So if I try to open the green, nope, doesn't work, but the red, yep, there you go, it opens. And the key, as you saw, was correctly consumed. Now grab the green, there it is on the UI, now use it, and yep, there you go, the key was consumed, and I can go in and win our mini game. All right, awesome. So here we have our entire system working. And now just for fun, let's add a blue door. Okay, so here we have the entire system working with our three nice door and key types. I've added the blue door just like we did for the green door, so we could easily add a lot more types by just adding another value in the enum. Both the key and the door use the enum value to figure out if they should open it. The doors have two colliders, so there's a trigger collider to figure out where the player is, if the player is close enough. And there's a second collider which works as a wall. So just like this, they're all closed and nope, as you can see a nice animation because I cannot open them. Then the keys also have a collider, and if I go onto it, yep, there you go, I've picked up the red key, and you can see it on the UI. And if I go and try to open the green door, nope, I can't do it. Open the blue door, nope, but the red one, and yep, there you go, I can open it. So I can now go through, and over here I have my nice trophy, and pick it up, and there you go, awesome. So now I can try to open the green key with the green door, and try to open the blue key, open the blue door, and yep, there you go, we have our nice three doors nicely open. All right, awesome. Now here we created a custom class to hold our keys, but you could very easily adapt this code to work with the inventory system that we created previously. That way you don't have a container just for the keys, but rather store them in the inventory like any other object. And also here we built this system in 2D, but this is the exact same system I used in the FPS micro game that works in 3D. The system there also has keys, doors, a key holder, and a UI script. So everything works exactly the same. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch that video and play that game. It's very quick and fully playable in your browser. So here we have our nice key door system fully working and looking great. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.